There's a couple prerequisite concepts to understand for this. So if you're already familiar with things like monocular versus stereoscopic video or depth maps, I'll leave a timestamp so you can skip ahead. If you don't know what those are, I'll explain in a moment. The software I'm using for this demonstration is DaVinci Resolve, specifically the Fusion page. But this can also be done in Fusion Standalone, Flame, Nuke, and maybe After Effects or Silhouette if they have the proper toolset. But let's jump into Fusion and talk about depth maps. On the right, you see a 2D MP4 video. Even though it was originally a recording of a 3D scene, it has lost that 3D information because of the file type that it is now. On the left, you will see what is called a depth map or a displacement map, which works by converting depth into luminance. Or to put it simply, the brightest areas are furthest from the camera and the darkest areas are closest to the camera. This will allow you to control the intensity or the range that an effect takes place based on its relative distance to the camera. And the most common example of this is probably depth of field. So if I add a tilt shift blur and pipe in the depth map on the right viewer, you will see that we now have depth of field. And I can change the focal plane to really demonstrate my point here. But this is a monocular input. In VR, you work with stereoscopic video because just like a set of human eyes, the difference or disparity in the two perspectives can be used to generate an interpretation of depth. So stereoscopic video will use two videos. Being a monocular video means that we only have one perspective to work with. So how do we convert a monocular video into a stereoscopic one? We can create a temporal offset to do this. So if I add a time speed node and I pipe this in and change it by one frame, you'll see here there's a slight difference. And that slight difference is enough for us to create disparity between these two cameras that we're going to tell Fusion to look at. So to calculate this disparity, we will use a disparity node. And I will use the original footage as the left camera and the one frame offset as the right camera. And if we look in our left viewer, nothing has happened because we haven't done anything with this disparity information. So we want to convert the disparity information into a depth channel or Z channel. So we can use a disparity to Z node. And you want to be careful with piping your inputs and outputs from left to left and the right to the right. And if I try to preview this node, I will come up with a processing error because it's looking for a 3D camera. So once I pipe this in, it'll make it happy, but we don't actually have to use our 3D camera because we're just faking it. We're not really using two separate perspectives. Now that we have our disparity information going into a Z-depth channel, we can use a copy aux node to further process this information. So I'm just going to pipe in the left viewer. And again, nothing has happened because it is looking for the color channel. We need to tell it to look for the disparity channel. Once we do that, there's something that looks relatively depth based, but we want more control. So I'm going to enable remapping and tell it to detect the range automatically. And this is really starting to look like a depth map where the luminance changes based on its distance to the camera. If I were to convert this luminance into an alpha channel so that it can be used as a mask input, I can use this on just about anything. So let's use a bitmap node. And the bitmap needs to be looking for luminance changes. And from here, I'm going to create a depth blur node bring the original footage into that depth blur node. And because it needs to look for this alpha channel coming from the bitmap, I will change the blur channel from Z to alpha and pipe the bitmap into it. And you're not seeing much because there isn't a whole lot of blur. Now if I really bring this up, there's a bit of a difference. It's blurrier here than here, but there's not much contrast in this channel. If we really take a look, it's quite similar across the board, so we can add contrast ourselves to really distinguish our depth. 
So if I bring this up to, I don't know, two, and just kind of bring this back. Yeah, now we can really see the difference. This is closer to the camera and it is in focus, and this is out of focus being further from the camera. But there are issues with this. Comparing to our original depth map, very inaccurate. If you take a look at this, all the details are very clean. They seem very accurate to the actual depth being portrayed. Whereas this is not only rather messy, both in spatial details, but also general accuracy. This hot spot says that it should be way out in the distance, and this dark spot should be really close to the camera. But it's because we're not using two actual perspectives. Again, it is simply a temporal offset. So it's doing its best guess based on that limited amount of information. And it's better than nothing, because this was generated using an AI-based algorithm and would have to be done for every single frame of a video. And if you don't have an algorithm like that available to you, you have to draw this in by hand, again, for every single frame. So it's much more time-saving than those more manual processes. Another problem that you may come across are occlusions. So let's take a look at, I guess, frame 850. And we now have another object in frame. But this object is not on the same focal plane as it should be. Take a look at our depth map. It's really dark here. It's in focus. And out here, it's out of focus as it gets further away. But you can fix this through a quick little equivalent to, let's say, the content aware fill from After Effects. Or in Fusion, we have the clean plate node. So what I can do here is add a clean plate, pipe it in, and tell it over this region to fill in. I'm just going to do a very quick mask here. I'm not concerned about accuracy. Once I fill it in, you can see that now our focal plane is relatively matched. It's not perfect. There are some artifacts from the filling in process, but it's not very noticeable to the human eye because it's quite similar. So it's all about the fakery here and just doing what you can get away with. But that's about it for this video. I do actually have another method that can be used for generating depth data like this procedurally, but it's more involved and complicated and I haven't figured out a way to really present it in a simplistic manner yet. But if you would like to see that or some other VFX type tutorials, then let me know in the comments and I will consider doing that.